You ever wonder what kind of uh, pain and heartache you may be causing the family and relatives of Lacey Peterson when you do your blow me up Lacey Peterson, Chop Peterson style? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just wondering. No, that, that, that's the response. Who, who, who? Who, who, who? Really? So it doesn't bother you that uh, what it may, uh, the feelings it may bring up in them? I say anyone who's offended should tune out. Not the point. That's not what I asked you. So don't try to change the subject. You do I continue to listen. About it. Why do you continue to listen? See, you're trying to change the subject. How I'm not changing the it? subject. I'm asking why I, you I continue to listen. For the reason 99%, I listen to the show for the reason 99% of the people do. We also stop and watch car wrecks, and we also Great. do auto parties. Doesn't make it good. It just means that we do it. That, uh, by the way, they still you pay me. As long as you listen, they don't care why you listen. As long as you do listen, and every time you listen, I get credit for it, and I get a big fat paycheck. You're changing the subject. Man. I'm not That's changing the subject. All the time. I asked you how you felt about what happens to her family when they do that. I'm That's offended when any time a caller calls in a request that I am offended. What's that? Any time a listener calls in and requests that sound effect, I'm offended. Yeah? Yes. Oh, but do it anyway. Well, because the listener asked for it, but I am offended. Well, because you'd rather get paid, so your offense can be uh, bought off is what you're well, saying. Well, I mean, I'm here to be, um, I, uh, look, I have to do what I have to do to get ratings and uh, make money. That's what I do, just like you do at your job. Listen, pal, you got a, you got an entertaining show. I don't think anybody will deny that, okay? Mm. Entertaining show. I listen to it because I'm you just you, uh, you just referred to it as a car wreck. Yeah. And I prefer, and I also uh, refer to it as eating at Olive Garden. And use that analogy all the time. Too. I do. A lot of people eat at Olive Garden doesn't make it good food. A lot of people listen to the Tom Likas show doesn't make well, it a good show. Wouldn't you like to own Olive Garden though? What's the point? Well, the point is making lots of money. See, the thing is, you always try to use a circular argument. If there's money involved, it's right. There's no it's circular not argument. Not. Wait, it's a it's a free country. We have free speech. God bless America. Did anybody say? You God know, bless the U.S. dollar. God we trust. What? This is the best country in the world because we is because you can even have the Tom Likas show. I think it's fantastic. Listen, I told you before the show is entertaining. However, I really wanted to know what you really felt about what her family may experience when you played that. That's all. You know again. I'm sorry. Our show is not on in Stockton and it's not on in Fresno. So you don't think her family ever uh, travels outside Stockton or President? I have no idea. I'll tell you what. If they call me then personally, if why they call me now? personally and express concern about it, I'll deal with that. It hasn't happened. You don't have the common sense to do it yourself? You say... Oh, you no. Know, I right give now. the people what they want. That's why I'm number one. You just admitted... Dude, you're number one in a few small markets, okay? Oh, yeah. Small markets like Chicago, San Francisco, Dallas... Phoenix, San Diego, and Los Angeles. Oh, just a, a bunch of little tiny places. Blew you away in the ratings recently. Blew you away. Yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta tell you what. When you when you have a subscription to Arbitron, pal, you let me know. Okay, when you have a subscription to the Arbitron book. Unbelievable. The guy claims he has the Arbitron rates. Well, good luck to you. From Zoyuit Snomer in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. B-I-T-C-H. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about, it's a different kind of a radio talk program, We're the Radio Talk Show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-8667. 1-800-5800-8667. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And this segment of the Tom Likas Show, and this segment only, is powered by H&R Block. You got people. What? That's not the slogan. Come on. No, that can't be right. Let's get the correct billboard in here. 
this segment, I'm going to read you what this says. I'm going to read you exactly what it says. It says, you got people? Yeah. Come on. Re- that's that's the slogan. You got people. They do your taxes. Not you've got people. No, you got people. You got people. <laughs> I'm just going to read it verbatim. <laughs> I thought there was a word missing. All right. <clears throat> this segment of the Tom Likas Show, powered by H&R Block, you got people. For an office near you, call 1-800-HR-BLOCK. Or visit hrblock.com. There I said it. (laughs) I'm sorry, Gary. I didn't think that was correct. Sorry. I didn't look. (laughs) I didn't intentionally screw with the commercial. I'm just saying you got people. Probably didn't run through the grammar check, but okay. I mean, H&R Block is an American institution. I have used H&R Block many, many times. And I can highly recommend it. But I didn't think you got people was the slogan. I thought they had something else. You've got people. Did, was Dean writing the copy now? <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of that, uh, what was that waste disposal company we saw when we were out at NASCAR? The slogan was, there was a waste, of, I swear this is true. There was a waste disposal company whose garbage cans were at uh, NASCAR, California Speedway. We were there recently, and they had their slogan, of course, with the requisite quotation marks around it. And it said, we'll take care of it. I'm just imagining I wanted to call the 800 number on the garbage can say, hello, I've got a dead body. (laughs) And you see the slogan, we'll take care of it. Don't worry, we'll take care of it. Forget about it. (laughs) That is too good. (laughs) That is too freaking good. The actual document. Let me right, let me see. Tom Colon. Oh, this is like dialogue. Okay. This segment of the Tom Likas show, powered by H and R Block, you got people. Okay. Not even you got people you can depend on, or you got that old song by James Taylor, you got a friend. What was you've got a friend? Oh. Okay. <laughs> what can I say? When this gig is done, I'm opening an ad agency. Ads be us. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. Here we are together again on the radio. What's your topic tonight, now, anyway? Get to that. Keep your pants on, please. Jesus Christ. It is just... uh... (laughs) Excuse me. Before I get to what I'm going to do this hour, I want to know if anybody out there bet the second race at Santa Anita today. Did anybody bet the second race at Santa Anita today? I'm not kidding. The second race at Santa Anita. <laughs> the winner, number six, DTB. Paying 420, 220, and 210. Who, who is the trainer? <laughs> Can we find out who the trainer of this horse is and find out how the horse got that name, please? I have to check my service marks and see if I actually copyrighted that. <laughs> DTB won the second race at Santa Anita. I am, if you think I'm making this, see, Dean's already seen it, so he won't be looking it up. But if you think I'm making this up, look it up. 
The winner of the second race at Santa Anita today, number six, DTB. And I'm guessing that uh, he might have been the odds-on favorite to win this race because of the low payout. Wow. So some Tom Likas fans probably made some money today out of Santa Anita. Got to love that. <laughs> it's like an inside joke. I think it's great. <laughs> anyway, check it out. Second race at Santa Anita today. We got to see if that horse is running again. I'm putting my money on that horse. I'll tell you right now. Just amazing. Oh, thank you for this, Gary. Here we, uh, where we get this from? This is, uh, is this a, uh, an ad agency trade publication? Yeah. yeah. January 27th, uh, 22nd, 2007, H&R Block Software Strategy. You got people. The new formula for software success, people. H&R Block's new slogan, you got people. Coincides with their apparent transformation into a hybrid of their old business as a tax preparation service company and their new business as a tax preparation software company. Okay. I, I believe you. <laughs> you know, okay. You got people. H&R Blanc, you got people. Thank you so much, big part of the program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, I uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who lives on the East Coast. And this friend was uh, at his office talking about the Tom Likas show. Now, as you may know, there are many cities on the East Coast where you have to have a computer or an iPod to listen to the Tom Likas show because radio stations won't put it on the air. And I am guessing uh, that the reaction he got in the office probably tells us a lot about this. This friend of mine was uh, talking in his office about the things we discuss on the air, and he specifically referred to us uh, being opposed to all those ball-busting bitches who are trying to make our lives a living hell. And he was overheard saying this in the office. And he got a memo about using the phrase ball-busting bitches. Now, he was not referring to anybody in the office. He was referring to the Tom Likas show. But on the East Coast, the capital of ball-busting bitches, New York City, there are more ball-busting bitches per square mile than any other city in America. It's amazing how you can't call a spade a spade. It's amazing how politically correct much of America still is. It reminds me of how happy I am to live on the West Coast where I can call a ball-busting bitch a ball-busting bitch. And do you know why? Because women who are not ball-busting bitches are not offended by that phrase. They're not. The only people who are offended by the phrase ball-busting bitches are ball-busting bitches themselves. That is the reason why in New York you would, have a, you would have a very hard time getting this show on a radio station. Because all the ball-busting bitches would get together and shut it down. Whereas in Los Angeles there are many less ball-busting bitches. And we all know, and we are savvy enough here in Southern California to know, as well as the other cities where the show is heard. That uh, no nobody who is not a ball-busting bitch would be offended by the phrase ball-busting bitch. If you want to know who the ball-busting bitches are, say the phrase ball-busting bitches within earshot of a group of women and see which ones object. Those will be the ball-busting bitches. You will notice the hot chicks, the cool chicks, the chicks who are fun to hang out with. The chicks you can joke around with, they won't be offended. The homely chicks, the chicks who don't get asked out on dates, the chicks who are past their expiration date, the chicks who are, you know, 50 pounds overweight, 
for whatever excuse they have, the homely chicks, they are much more likely to become ball-busting bitches. Because clearly they're bitter ball-busting bitches. That's how they became ball-busting bitches. And uh, I think that explains why our show is on so many more stations in the western United States. Why we're on in Los Angeles and Portland and Dallas and Las Vegas and Seattle. Why are we on in all these cities, but we're not on in New York or Philadelphia or Boston? You know why? Heavy concentrations of ball-busting bitches. I think we're on to something, don't you? Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I actually got called out on being a listener of yours the other night. Love it. I was at a bar, and this girl comes up to me. I start talking to her. She goes, once you want to buy me a drink? She goes, sweetie, I never buy a girl a drink until I bang her. She goes, you're a Tom Likas with an orange yoga. Yes, sir. It's the Tom Likas Show. I want 800 800 tom That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. That phrase, ball-busting bitches. I use it all the time here. But back east, oh, you try saying that in the, uh, with an earshot of women. All the ball-busting bitches. By the way, why is the East Coast so packed with ball-busting bitches? And can I ask another question for those of you uh, yutzes from back East? How in the world does a man find a ball-busting bitch attractive? There's something about guys. They're so used to being around ball-busting bitches, they're actually convinced these women are hot. Why? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here is Eileen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, dear. How are you? I'm good. Uh, that's great. That's great. You always keep me laughing. I love listening to your show. Um, I just wanted to call in and say that I completely agree with you on the ball-busting bitches comment. Um, you should be allowed to say it wherever you want because this is a free country, freedom of speech. And uh, you're also absolutely right that the only women who get offended by that comment are the so-called ball-busting bitches because I'm not one. I'm not offended by it. It makes me laugh. It and makes you whole- laugh because you're not one. The ones who get offended are ball-busting bitches, and then they prove your point. You're exactly right. It just it gets under their skin. You know that it bothers them because you're right. hitting that button. That is exactly right. All I wanted to say, can you take me out with the bong rip? I certainly can. <coughs> it's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Just curious about that. I mean... Uh, Has anybody noticed the preponderance of ball-busting bitches from the East Coast? And if you're ever on the East Coast, how many women are ball-busting bitches? Doesn't make any sense. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Sam on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, I've got, uh, I think I can blow holes this argument on ball-busting bitches. Let me let me give you a little analogy. What what if I'm standing near a, a group of black guys and I say, I say something like, stupid, and then use the N-word? You don't think it's going to, is it just piss off the stupid ones or all of them? Well, I think that's different. I think it is going to piss off uh, anybody uh, who happens to be African-American. I Why? do. Why not just the stupid ones? Well, again, because it has nothing to do with whether somebody is stupid. Some people use that phrase uh, without any, uh, 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 they're not discerning at all, in other words. They, they, they're they just saying it about everybody. And uh, I don't think there's a lot of men out there who think all women are bitches or all women are ball busters or all women are ball busting bitches. Well, I think I think you're using a hot, hot, hot word here. You, just the term bitch. 
is going to is going to upset. Well, the first caller we got was a woman. She said she's not offended by it because she's not a ball busting bitch. I, I disagree. I think I think. Well, you're not a woman. The first caller was a woman, and she said she's not offended by it because she knows she's not a ball busting bitch. Well, I think there again, I'll use your analogy. You jump off a building, you're going to have uh, once in a while you're going to have. But I think the majority are going to. I am upset. sure the majority of women who are not ball busting bitches are going to agree with me. I I, I, oh, I disagree. Well, with you. but you won't be here after I get all of the phone calls from the women who do agree. Well, we, uh, and well, you got to call in because I mean, the women that listen to your station, for the most part, are not. Are are. How, well, how do you know who listens to this station? How would you know? I listen to the station. No, that, well, that doesn't tell you what kind of women listen to the station. All the only thing you know about people who listen to the station is yourself. Well, most of the women I think that the call in. I see a, a, a large percentage actually. No, act, uh, let me tell you something. A large percentage of the people who call in are, are a very small percentage of the audience. Now, one percent of the audience ever calls a radio program. Oh, I, I agree. Ninety-nine percent right. don't. You have no idea who listens to this show. You're not an expert on this subject, and you're not in a position to comment. No, but I, I'm just saying on this one statement. Jermaine, you have no way of knowing who listens to this show. Okay, I'll agree with that. So I mean, don't I'm be calling in here and speculating on who listens because you don't well, I mean, know. I know, I know your demographic. No, but, you I mean, don't. Who, what is well, my demographic? Your own demographic is what? What is it, 18 to 32 year old men? Well, I never said that. That's uh, only part of our demographic. Our demographic is actually men between 18 and 44. Okay, well, that's, well then that's who's listening for the most part. That's 70% of the audience, but uh, 30% is females. Okay, what at what age are your females? Do you know what that demographic is? For those? Generally, they tend to be between twenty five and forty four. Oh, twenty five and forty four. Okay, I'm just my my point is that when your argument when you say that you know ball busting bitch to a group of women that for the most part you're gonna upset all of them, not just the. Ball I don't bitch. agree. I think only the ball busting bitches get upset. Well, and it's not ball busters. It's really the term bitches. I mean. You know, women who are not a bitch are not offended by the term bitch. I, <laughs> I think when you look at bitch is a, a derogatory term, I think. You know, it's like calling a black person the N-word. No, it's right. not. But it's not. Because so many people have used the N-word indiscriminately to describe an entire race of people. They don't use it to describe stupid people or lesser people. Uh, they They use it on everybody. But the word well, bitch has a very, the either. word I'm bitch sorry. has a very specific meaning, and it is a particular kind of woman. What about, what about uh, stuff like spicks, things, words like that? Don't you think, don't you equate that? Uh, it's not, not the same, same because every woman is not a bitch. Well, every, every, I'd say spick. Every man is not a spick. Really? What is a spick, sir? I, I think a spick is It's what? <laughs> By the way, does anyone even use that term anymore? Even when they're trying to say something derogatory? Yeah, I'm saying it's a derogatory term. Other That's than insane. spick and span? Huh? Is All right. Get a better phone, and I've had enough of you. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Deborah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hi. I wanted to let you know that I am what you refer to as a ball busting bitch, and I am not offended by that phrase. And at even all. you're not offended by it. Excuse me? And even you're not offended by it, and you are one. And I'm not offended at all. Because you know there's such a thing as a ball busting bitch. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you and, know that when we some... when we when we say the phrase ball busting bitches, you know we're not talking about everybody. We're talking about you. I exactly. I fit the trust me, I fit the description perfectly and I own it. You're proud to be a ball busting bitch. I have no problem with it. I feel like at this point I've earned it. I, look, as long as you know what you are and you're not offended when we use the phrase ball-busting bitches, it's fine with me. Let me tell you, Tom, the women who call in and say that they are ball-busting bitches but act offended by it, please give me a break, okay? We know who we are, and if you are going to be something, you should wear it proudly. Now, do you have a husband or a boyfriend uh, whose balls you bust? Excuse me? Do you have a husband or a boyfriend whose balls you bust? 
I have an ex-husband and three ex-fiancés. And you bust all their balls. That's what they said. Oh, but you still do it if you can. <laughs> oh, absolutely. If you, absolutely. If you can take cash from them or you can make them lose some sleep at night, I'll bet you still do it. Oh, please. I've, I've done a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, most of the time I agree with you on the things that you say. And today I had to laugh when you said that women who are called ball busting bitches are offended by it because I said, oh, please. They're not really ball busters then. Exactly. They're just not. The true ball busting bitches know who they are. That's right. Well, so I want you to know you've got somebody behind you on this one. Well, now I even have the ball-busting bitches supporting me, and that's a real step ahead. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Okay, Tom. I appreciate the call. Tom. Tom. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Guys look at sex the way we look at pizza. There's pizza for square pizza, round pizza. There's pizza from uh, the old-fashioned mom-and-pop store. There's pizza from Pizza Hut. The way guys look at pizza is there's no bad pizza. It's the Tom Likes Show. It's the Tom Likas Show, coming to you from Hollywood. Uh, 1 800 5 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. We're talking about ball busting bitches. Blair, there's alliteration for you on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, it is a pleasure to talk to you. I've been listening to you for a few years, and had I been listening to you, um, 17, 18 years ago, I probably would not have gotten married. I'll I bet that's true. A ball busting bitch. Now, what attracted you to a ball busting bitch? Well, first of all, I didn't know she was a ball buster. You know, and then I think um, once I found out, you know, I was just like uh, stupid. Like, uh, well, I guess this is the way it's supposed to be. And I, 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 you know what, I always thought, well, when she gets older, she'll mellow out and she won't be, you know, so nasty and, you know, so mean and so damn picky. But uh, that didn't happen. It just got worse and worse and worse. And uh, I want to say something to that guy that called up earlier that was trying to say that it was offensive to all women. I can tell you that there's been plenty of women that I've went out with since then. And, uh, you know, I've used that term and said that my ex was a ball-busting bitch. They were never offended. They were like, yeah, she was a bitch. You know, and women use that term about each other all the time, and the gals that aren't bitches are not offended. Well, I think yeah, that one caller was a ball-busting bitch, and she said, that's what I am. I own it, she said. She's you proud know, of it. To this day, when I have to deal with my ex, and sometimes she is breaking my balls, and I sit there and say that, and she gets, like, totally offended. Of course she does, because she is a ball-busting bitch. And I'm just like, well, you're so offended, but look at the crap that you're putting me through. You're offended about that? Well, I'm offended about what you do to me on a daily basis, Tom. I couldn't take the trash out correctly. I didn't wash the car right. I didn't mow the lawn right. I needed, well, this week you got to mow it horizontally and the next week diagonally and then the next week vertically so that we have these lines in the lawn, okay? I mean, you know, if I was moving furniture in the house, she's out there with a tape measure. It had to be within a sixteenth of an inch of where she wanted. I mean, are you kidding me? Holy cow. And I couldn't take out the trash right, Tom. I, it, you, if I put stuff in the back of the truck, it, okay, she wanted me to put the tailgate down. I'm like, look, I'm 6'2". I'm a big, strong guy. I can lift it over the tailgate. No, you're going to scratch the tailgate of the truck. Are you kidding me? You know, no, honey, I'm not putting the tailgate down. And then she would lay into me, and it would go on and on. Finally, i do whatever I had to do to shut her up. Yeah. So uh, how did you finally decide to get rid of her permanently? <laughs> well, you know what? I I stopped drinking, and I didn't smoke any weed, and I wasn't doing any of that for years while I was with her. 
And in the end, I couldn't take it anymore, and I started drinking. And once she found out I started drinking, she decided it was time to get rid of me because, she, and I started uh, getting back into playing music, and I got into band. And so she didn't have the control she had over me. So she decided it was time to get rid of me, and I was just like, you know what? You're right. It is time to get rid of me. Thank you. So uh, how did she react when you got rid of her? Well, she, you know, we split up, and uh, it was a big fight. And for the first two years that we were separated, she fought and fought and fought with me. But the last couple of years, I finally got my head together, and I don't, I don't participate. She's still mean. She's still nasty, and she still wants to fight, and she's moved on. Um, with her significant others and fought with them. And, uh, and let me guess, know. she probably squeezed out a kid while she was with you? Uh, we have four. <laughs> you know what? My kids are great, and my kids are at the point now where they really can't stand their mom. They're all with me, and uh, I love my kids. So you don't pay any child support, support because they're with you? I've never paid a dime of child support. I've never paid a dime of alimony. We owned our own business, and when we split up, I told her, I said, well, if you want anything out of this business, you better keep working because the minute you walk away, then, you know, it's, I'm going to let it go under, and you ain't going to get a dime. So, uh, you know, that's the way it went. <laughs> I love that. But, you know, hey, I love my kids. My kids are great. And, you know, I'm a kid person, so that's not a problem. But, right. you know, I unfortunately, I picked the wrong women. Well, and, he's not uh, so much the kids because, you know, I love kids, too. It's it's about whether you are paying money to a ball-busting bitch so she can go out and party with other guys. Well, she doesn't party with other guys. She parties with girls. Oh, really? Yeah. So why did she marry you if she's into girls? Well, and that was the. I didn't find this out until much later that that was the problem at the root of our thing is that she had this, this problem, this tendency, and she never told me. And I think she was trying to fit in society. I don't know what she was doing. She's half nuts as far as I'm concerned. But you know, after she left me, she's been with women. But you know, and the the kids are you know they've had a hard time with that, and then they watched her continue the same behavior of, you know, fighting. I mean, uh, when I would get up in the morning, she'd be yelling at me. When I went to bed at night, she'd be yelling at me. Okay, and then she wants me to have sex with her, and I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. You've been yelling at me all day. Okay, well, I'll have sex with you. It'll shut you up, and maybe you'll be nice in the morning. No. <laughs> Yikes. just as mean every morning. You know? And I was, I was stupid. I hung in there, and especially once I had kids, I was like, well, I knew. I said, well, when the last kid turns 18, I'm out of here. I'm not going to break up the household. I'll, you know, I made my own bed. I'm going to sleep in it. I'll take it on the chin. But, you know, then when I started doing stuff for myself, and she didn't have that control, well, then that was it, you know? Wow. Oh, yeah. It's been insane. I could do a whole show with you on what I've been through. <sighs> That is painful. But I can tell you, Tom, that I don't spend more than $40 on a date, and I make sure I get laid the first night that I go out with some gal. And if I don't, I pretty much I don't really see him again. Good for there's you. Been a, there's been a couple that it took me a couple of dates to get laid, but, you know, I don't spend any money on them, and some of the gals have complained about that. I said, And I tell them straight from the start, hey, I'm not going to do nothing for you. Don't expect anything. If you want to be together and have a good time, great. If not, then go your own way now. But don't come to me and say, well, why don't you buy me things? And why don't you take me out to expensive dinners? And, you know, why don't you do anything for me on Valentine's Day? So I just, hey, I told you right from the start, I ain't doing that stuff. Good for you. I'm I proud. Love, I love your show. I love your show. Blair, thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Benna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Great. I am calling in to complain about the women that are complaining about the word bitch. My thought process is if you're not a bitch, then don't trip on it. I mean, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. I mean... All these women are constantly complaining, oh, he called me a bitch. And you know what? 
if, if someone calls you a bitch and you're not a bitch, then you shouldn't get angry about it. If and somebody that, calls you a bitch, you probably are a bitch. Right. And not only that, if someone calls you a bitch and you're not a bitch, I mean, and you don't feel that you fall under that characteristic, then why are you getting all offended? I mean, I'm talking about general terms, like that one guy that called up and said, all women get offended by the word bitch. That's BS as far as I'm concerned, because if someone's going to char characterize me as a bitch because of their ex, or they're going to say, oh, those bitches over there, then they must not know me because I'm not a bitch. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm nice. I'm not a whining, complaining, pain in the ass. So I don't think that I'm a bitch. And I'm heterosexual, and I don't complain to my husband all day about every single thing that he does. And I let him have his freedom, and there's trust there. And I don't feel the need to bitch and nag. So, I mean, I don't see why women get so offended by that. I mean, I honestly don't. I mean, I think it's like a little out of proportion. I mean, they, they whine and complain about every single thing that comes out of everybody's mouth. And I figure, like, if, if that's not you, then why are you worrying about it? You're absolutely right. You know, I mean, obviously, they obviously are, are relating to some of those characteristics if they're getting so offended. I mean, is that not right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's very frustrating. And, I mean, it's like everything nowadays is just so taken out of proportion. I mean, every comment, everything that comes out of your mouth has to be so censored and so politically correct. And, I mean, it's just... It's gotten out of control, you know. Everyone is just up in arms about every single thing that comes out of everybody's mouth. And I, I just think it's gotten, you know, I, I, I heard so many things about your show, about how much of a misogynist you are and you're, you know, you hate women and you this and you that. And I've listened to you and I don't really feel that that's what you're doing at all. I think that, you know, you pretty much call it as you see it. And I, I think that women that get offended are obviously, uh, you know, you're pushing buttons. And if you're pushing buttons, then, you know, what's going on there? Hang on a second. Uh, Amanda, I have Benna here. Uh, ask your question. I just was wondering, first of all, I love you, Tom, and I love your show. Thank you. But I was wondering what the exact definition of a ball-busting bitch is. Benna, would you like to take a stab at that? Sure, most definitely. I mean, I think that, I think a ball-busting bitch is just a, a very bossy, very um, dominating female that, you know, in a lot of ways probably has self-esteem issues and feels the need to control everyone and everything around her because she's not, you know, feeling quite in control of her own life and feels the need to complain and nag about every situation around her and does it in a very domineering, nasty, abrasive way. That's what I would characterize as a ball-busting bitch. Okay. I mean that's that. me. I mean that's what I would see it as. I don't know. Okay, what, I, I think that's a, I think that's a very good definition. I I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, right, I think that. when people are insecure, when people are insecure with their own womanhood, and they feel the need to you know dominate a man to get attention or you know go overboard to get what they want, you know, in, a, in an aggressive way, I think that they they are then characterized as a bitch. You know, I don't think a strong woman is necessarily a bitch. I don't think someone who's educated and comfortable with themselves it should be called a bitch. But definitely if you're using that to control situations and get money from men and, and do scandalous things, then you should be called a scandalous name. And that's a bitch. And a ball-busting bitch. I, I like that. So that's more of a a bitch to the ultimate <laughs> That's that is a to, to me uh, the difference between a bitch and a ball busting bitch. A ball busting bitch is somebody who usually has a husband or a boyfriend, and is constantly criticizing him, constantly okay. telling him what's wrong with him, complaining okay. and nagging and pushing and whining about everything. You know, my thing is, you know, if you're in a relationship and it, it's working, then why bitch? I mean, if, if you're getting what you, your needs met. You know, and everything's going okay. Women see, I, and I, I hate to say this in general, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say all things, but many women feel the need to consistently complain and, 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 and bitch and nag about things that are really, really stupid. That's right. The Tom Likas Show.